Kristen from Dickman Farms, and this is your smart gardening tip. I'm going to talk to you about dividing and separating your iris. Why? Because it's a great time of year to do that. Anywhere between July and September. You get good root growth. You know when your irises are flowering, what they need to do and why. Well, because they're crowded. They're big. About every three to five years, you really want to divide them. You get better flowering. You can spread spread them around the garden or share them with your friends and your family. They're going to love them just as much as you do and they're really easy to grow. Who knew? Old fashioned favorite for a variety of reasons. That's probably number one. And they're beautiful. Beautiful. So that said, things, are, things to know you need to have or something like this. You want some flat time garden fork or your shovel. This is much better for iris specifically because you can get down and get under your iris plump and pry it up out of the ground. You loosen the roots instead of cutting through them and breaking them. The key thing to know is that little rhizome right here doesn't want to be pierced. You can let little bugs and critters and stuff get in there that don't want to be. So by using your fork, it props it up. You get your bundle with some really good muscles. Eat your weeds, break it off, or use a really sharp knife, kitchen knife, something that you've devoted to the garden and you break off your bunch. You want to make sure you have your big mommy, mommy rhizome here that has a good fan, at least, you know, five blades to it. So I'll use my clump here, it's a little bit bigger for you to see. And you've got a couple eyes here. This will flower next year. You have your midrib, and that's where your flower is going to be next year. Back to this piece. You start by cutting off your roots. Get a handful, clip them. That's all your iris needs to root next year. Here, if you leave these long, they're just going to break and snap off. And there's somebody. Cut those off. Leave yourself a long middle, and then you can write your color there. Is this Beverly Sills? Is it purple? Is it Grandma's favorite? Whatever it is, write it on there. You can store it. You want to let it store or dry for at least a few hours before you plant it again. It'll also make your life a lot easier if you rinse this clump off, get all the dirt out. It'll allow you to see these rhizomes better so you can divide and conquer that. You'll get chunks that are really, really long, that don't have fans and don't have roots. Throw them out. They're old. They don't do anything. They just kind of rot. Cut them off. Make sure you got a good three-inch rise on there, and that's a good iris. When you're ready to plant, make sure you have some good bone meal. That's your phosphorus. That's what allows those roots to really establish and get a good kickoff. Get a spot with full sun at least six hours, and dig down. Add your compost if you want to. You put your biotone bone meal. Put your roots down, rhizome up. Half an inch to an inch of soil cover. Fan up. You want to see that rhizome. Just to the top of the soil. Anything much deeper inhibits the iris from developing. It can potentially rot. It doesn't like to be down under like other plants. Give it a good gallon of water. Let it set in. Next week, a good gallon of water. Let it set in. Do this for about three, four weeks. That's all you have to do. I've done worse. I've chucked them in a pile. They come up next year in the garden where I forgot about them. They're beautiful. They're awesome. They're really that easy. So until next time, have fun. Happy gardening.